Hello and welcome to the next top list feature on Zoo Tours. Banking off of my top 10 favorite Zeus video that I made a couple years ago. Since I've gone to quite a few more places since then, I thought I would just now rank all 25 zoos and aquariums that I've been to so far. Couple of notes, since I don't have any proper footage, there will be no theme parks. Also, I should mention I've never been to a bad zoo, but I pinned them up against each other and asked myself which one would I rather be at right now. Lastly, each spot on the list will be brief, and I'll save what I find positive about these places and maybe throw in one or two criticisms. So let's go. Number 25, the Akron Zoo. At around 100 species, so far it's the smallest collection I've seen at a place that calls itself a zoo. But much like Nashville, you could say for about 95% of their habitats, you can't really complain. What makes this place worth visiting is the Grizzly Ridge. It's biggest and one of its newest attractions that beautifully represents the backyards of woodland North America. More bald eagles than you usually see together, a multi-guest level river otter haven, an aviary that acts as a treehouse, a grizzly bear home well worth its praise, and it concludes with two species of canids that are not often seen in zoos. They recently opened and expanded their land with the pride of Africa and are continuing to improve with their upcoming wild Asia. But why last on the list? From experience, you could go through the whole zoo in under 40 minutes but that does not take away its quality and their attempts to improve. To number 24, the Zoo Knoxville. Nearly the same size as Akron, but it has the advantage due to it having more popular animals like elephants, rhinos, and great apes. The positives? It has two fantastic areas right off the bat by the entrance that brings you closer to black bears and malayan tigers that have never experienced before. But Zoo Knoxville is high on the list because its African elephant home isn't pretty, wasn't too big of a fan of the concert style parking lot that actually relatively isn't that close to the zoo, and I did not like the random assortment, having many animals placed around without belonging to organized attractions. Though I enjoyed my visit, you probably won't find me back in Knoxville anytime soon. Down to number 23, the Newport Aquarium. The only one on the list I've yet to properly introduce you to, but ironically I live 20 minutes from the place. It opened only in 1999 and like many but not all aquariums, it makes you follow a single, mostly uninterrupted pathway into the world of rivers, shores, swamps, and oceans from 12 very diverse galleries. Its biggest highlights are their Gator Alley, home to their white American alligators. You have the Stingray Hideaway, an atrium with the Ray Touch Tank, and it has a crawl through space that goes through the middle of the exhibit. They have a 300,000 gallon shark infested tank filled with America's first shark rays. And its finale is a uniquely stylized penguin gallery which shares a minor record for being the second most diverse penguin habitat in the world. Why is it so high up on the list? Quality wise, no complaints in that category, but it is also my hometown aquarium, and I've seen it enough. But also putting myself in the perspective of a first time visitor, if you've been here once, there's no need to go back for several years. Now, number 22, the Milwaukee County Zoo. What I consider my second home, and because of that, the Milwaukee Zoo used to be at a top spot on the last list, up until I visited more zoos, and no offense to the place, but it didn't take long to kick it out of the top 10. They opened at their current site back in 1961, and many other zoos that are older than that have seen better days. But on the positive side, the place is huge, 200 acres, though it's mostly woods, I do admire them for working around nature. They have what I still consider to be the best birdhouse I've had the pleasure of going through so far. Before the renovations and before animals passed away, their largest area had five outdoor predator and prey illusions. They kicked their master plan in gear by giving their elephants new expanded space and pretty soon, a new home for hippos. To number 21, the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo, the ninth oldest zoo in America. And like MKE, it's more on the outdated side than it isn't. Its layout is a little too scattered, keeping each attraction far apart. The primates, cats, and aquatics building still exist, though that will change in the near future, and the bear and sea lion enclosures aren't the prettiest either. Its pluses, it has one of the few occasionally immersive rainforest buildings in the US, an elephant facility that makes the giants walk onto the guest path, 
in two big cat exhibits that allows them to walk above you from multiple platforms. Without them, though, the other parts of the zoo would turn me away. Next, number 20, the Tennessee Aquarium. It's beautiful. You'll be there most of the day. It's not just an aquarium, and the best part, it comes in two buildings. But the only reason why it's so high on the list is because I much prefer zoos. Like Newport, you don't need multiple visits close together. It's not exactly photographer friendly, and without the addition of the ocean building, I wouldn't really see a reason to visit if it was just the freshwater building. On the flip side, there's otters, lemurs, penguins, and big sharks, but the thing that stood out to me the most was out of the 12 galleries, only two of them resembled that of what you would find at a typical aquarium. We haven't completely seen how yet, so I'll hold off on the spoilers and take you to number 19, the Fort Wayne Children's Zoo. Like I said on its first and so far only tour, this place is criminally underrated. Their African savanna is so big it could be a zoo by itself. There's an Australia section that's not just your typical walk through kangaroo area. The only thing that really brings it down is what's in between its top three realms, which is the Zoo Central, filled with random animals and mostly old fashioned cages. But I did notice an improvement on my last visit. Now number 18, the Toledo Zoo and Aquarium. Only 51 acres, yet it's able to fit so much in these walls. Though its Tiger Terrace row will bring down its rank until the day they don't exist, one thing I admire about the Toledo Zoo is that it doesn't have an architectural theme. More specifically, there's no two animal areas that look like they were made by the same people. I love its very photographer-friendly birdhouse, the world's first underwater viewing for hippos, I like that it actually has a decent home for polar bears, and I would easily fork over more admission just to see their aquarium. Number 17, the Pittsburgh Zoo and Aquarium. A zoo that doesn't play by the AZA rules. Well, because they're no longer part of the AZA, yet you wouldn't guess that without doing some research. The negative aspects from a few visits aren't necessarily their outdated projects, rather their newer projects. The islands in the Jungle Odyssey were definitely a hit and miss and they both kind of look cheap compared to their African savanna that was built in the 80s. But what brings me back is their polar bear underwater tunnel, their elephant seals, and like Toledo, I'm continually amazed by their aquarium, except this one could pass as its own city attraction. To number 16, the wilds in Cumberland, Ohio. The first time I visited, I was absolutely stunned because I never saw anything like it before. It's the closest thing I've come to experiencing an Indian, Central Asian, and East African safari. The wilds is almost perfectly immersive all around, thanks to the fact that it's 9,000 acres and the smallest safari habitat is 35 acres. Since barriers are mostly out of view, it's a well-suited place for photographers of any level. After your tour, you'll be amazed without even realizing that you only saw around 25 species. The only reason why it's high on the list is simply because I still do prefer a regular styled zoo. At number 15, the Lincoln Park Zoo. The free facility I'm no longer allowed to film at. At 35 acres, it's the smallest zoo I've been to so far and by far. But similar to Toledo, despite their sizes, Lincoln Park has just about every major slash typical zoo animal in its collection. The things that stand out to me the most were its modernized rotational ape habitat, the only mostly indoor feature devoted to many parts of Africa I've seen so far, a well-designed and dedicated forest for Japanese macaques, which have their own separate attraction, there's a simple rocky shore for seals that's been around, kinda, since 1879. And their atypical small mammal combined reptile house. The reason why I won't put it in the top 10 is because it's usually a short visit, but that's not really the zoo's fault. Despite their personal warnings towards me, I'll definitely be back for more. Number 14, the Indianapolis Zoo. One of the places I have to give credit to for helping me re-realize I want to work with animals in some way after going through their dolphin in water adventure program. Once again, it's a small zoo, only 64 acres, but the biggest difference between this and the other small facilities is Indianapolis doesn't have a whole lot. This is both a positive and negative thing, as most of their realms are large and therefore fill out more space. Even if they didn't update anything for decades, I would still visit the Indy Zoo every year for the rest of my life, thanks to its dolphin dome, 
an unusual orangutan lab that allows them to get over 50 feet in the air, one of the world's few desert domes, and multiple elephant fields that are worth bragging about. Number 13, the Louisville Zoo. Last time I made this kind of list, Louisville didn't even get a mention. It was mostly because their African savanna, their largest area, really brings down the zoo's attractiveness level. Their lion exhibit hasn't changed since it was built, and their elephant home is three-fifths of an acre, and it was just expanded. But later I realized I need to give the place some credit. It has three top honored AZA award-winning exhibits, the most I think any other zoo has, from four different areas, their colobus monkeys, snow leopards, gorillas, and bears can travel from home to home right above your head. If you'd like to see these, I've covered the zoo almost to completion, and you can find them in my Louisville playlist. At the number 12 spot, the Detroit Zoo. At 125 acres and enclosures that look like open fields, this place gives the impression that it's much bigger than it actually is. Not a positive or negative thing, just a fact, but it does make me feel like I'm at the Brookfield Zoo. What brings it down though is that particular exhibit style is just a bit too consistent. What brings Detroit up? Having the two best animal establishments of their kind in America. First, their Penguin Conservation Center that was designed to literally drop jaws. It's just one decent sized habitat, but their 4D ship room and underwater tunnel turns this into an extraordinary voyage. The other realm that makes the Detroit Zoo so popular to zoo lovers is the Arctic Ring of Life, a polar zone that features the world's largest carnivore on land and four acres. The two habitats for the ice bears are massive. One side represents warmer seasons and the other, the wintry ice. But the best part is the underwater tunnel that makes them appear as if the bears live with the seals that are immediately across from them. Number 11, the Brookfield Zoo. The better of the two Chicago parks. Thanks to its 216 acres, it's able to fit 16 territories. Rarely do you find places that have buildings representing places like swamps or immersive deserts in the night or have two aquariums in two reptile slash birdhouses. Its top area though is the Great Bear Wilderness, another place on the list that successfully cares for polar bears. The finale of the Living Coast is a penguin dome, and one of my personal favorites, despite what others say, is I'm still amazed by their tropic world, the world's first indoor rainforest in a zoo. I cannot wait to go back and film to continue our tours of this unique place. Now at number 10, the Nashville Zoo. Even I wish it was ranked higher. As I will always stand by, the zoo can seemingly do no wrong. As all of their habitats, even their reptile terrariums, are nothing short of high quality or above average. They chose quality over quantity. They got rid of their elephants because they didn't think their exhibit was good enough. And it's three acres. Other positives are their given islands that are as natural as they come. They have a newly refurbished and rethemed tiger facility, a zone dedicated just to Peru and the spectacled bear, and other areas I'll definitely feature in the future. Number 9, the DC's Smithsonian National Zoo. Based on just one visit and going through everything, I feel like its quality was almost exactly 50-50 split between world class and then modernized use of historic habitats. The three zones that stood out from the rest was Amazonia, a split-level South American aquarium that shows life under and above water. We just saw how the zoo successfully reworked its 80-year-old elephant home, and of course I'll never stop mentioning the craft and beauty of its Asia Trail. Like others, I'll definitely be back for more. To number 8, the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. America's sixth oldest zoo. Not the second as they claim to be, but going off of that fact, like the DC Zoo, it's a good mix of old and new. But this isn't necessarily positive, as their 1930s bear grottos are still in use, and their two elephant yards don't even combine to be an acre, though they are planning to build a four acre facility for 2025. Its strong suits are being known for having the country's greatest insectarium, one of the few sanctuaries for manatees, exhibiting seven species of apes, keeping America's oldest animal building and its 1906 elephant house up and running, and of course having the greatest hippo that ever lived. But what I admire most about my hometown zoo 
is despite it being 64 acres like Indianapolis, it has 22 different animal attractions, the most I've seen in a place so far. At number seven, the Houston Zoo. I chose to go here only because it was the first cheap flight I saw online. I knew their zoo was somewhat decent. I saw several thousand photos of it, but I didn't know what to expect, and I loved it. Once again, another smaller zoo, 55 acres, that offers so much. To get the negatives out of the way, obviously I wasn't a fan of this sea lion habitat, nor did I like one of their bird gardens, although I think it's now closed. What I did like was their somewhat newly renovated and expanded facility for their Asian elephants. Their children's zoo is very atypical. They have three areas dedicated to birds. You can't go wrong with having an aquarium and they're dark. African Forest does a great job at taking you into a completely other world. I also look forward to one day covering their upcoming highly anticipated South American Pantanal set to open this year. At the number six spot, the Memphis Zoo. A couple of its areas were definitely forgetful, but I hinted at in the China video, I fell in love with the zoo's theatricality. Their entrance and cat area is Egyptian themed. China paints a picture of the country's architecture with positively blinding glazed tiles imported from Hong Kong. Their Northwest Passage shows off huge Native American structures and the Teton Trek has a small scale replica of the Old Faithful Inn at Yellowstone. More than any other zoo we've covered so far, I look forward to touring you through Memphis to near completion. Number five, the St. Louis Zoo. Last time I made this kind of list, the STL Zoo was at the number one spot. So here comes some repeated words. Who doesn't love a place with open top indoor penguin exhibits? Or a zoo that puts most of its big animals in one massive, seemingly never ending forest? Or retains history with their reptile, bird and primate houses built in the 1920s and 30s? And the cherry on top for me, letting you walk through the underwater world of sea lions. I praise this place mostly because I've come up with some really great photos with each visit, but it doesn't quite live up to others like number four, the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. Like their cousins at the wilds, this is also massive, 580 acres, the largest zoo I've been to so far and because of its size, some even call it a theme park. And no, it's not just because it actually has a theme park connected to it. Each realm, eight in total, makes it seem like you're going to a completely different zoo each time. Polar bears can walk and swim above your head at the same time. You can see the hemisphere's best manatee tank. There's Tasmanian devils, koalas, quality homes for their elephants and tigers, and an African savanna that's 22 acres and succeeds at bringing you to the wild plains. This is probably the best zoo in America. To number three, the Shedd Aquarium. Often regarded by many zoo lovers as the greatest aquatic facility in the United States, this neoclassical style aquarium makes my heart race in excitement every time I see its glass ceiling come in view. While most of its galleries are just identical tank after identical tank, that consistency is broken with an Amazon feature with water levels that change depending on what month it is. In the center, there's a 360 degree tank filled with the colors of the reef. Below the aquarium is an award-winning gallery that'll make you want to visit the Philippines. And Shed's top dog is the Oceanarium, modeled off of the wild Pacific Northwest and holds the title as the world's largest indoor marine mammal facility. Now down to number two, the world famous San Diego Zoo. Absolutely no surprise here, but I do go back and forth between this and Columbus as my favorite zoo. But the question is, where would I rather be right now? Right now I'd rather be in California, placed in the shadows of the lost forest where I don't even know what I'll run into next, or trek through the most random mix of African creatures put together. And who wouldn't want to get a glimpse of what Southern California looked like 12,000 years ago? What draws visitors to constantly come back is not just because they have a great marketing team, but it's their massive collection of rare animals, their breeding program of those rare animals, and its warm and always tropical environment that makes you feel like you're walking in the wild. And now for number one on the list, the Georgia Aquarium. After studying the map and photos, I was wrong to know what to expect. It truly is like no other place in the world. 
When you first walk in, its main plaza is like a colorful utopia surrounded by massive entryways to your own idealistic underwater envisions each exhibit represents. We could call out a couple individual areas for being lackluster, but overall the Georgia Aquarium did not skimp on any of the galleries. Each room includes something that'll make your eyes widen and inspire you in some way. I said I pinned each zoo up against each other to determine which one I'd rather be at. Well, of all the positive things each place has to offer, I decided it wouldn't be so bad to see this over and over again. Thank you for watching.